Well, let's have more now on the government's announcement of an investigation into the blood contamination scandal that led to the deaths of more than 2,000 people. I'm joined from Westminster by the Labour MP, Diana Johnson, whose long campaign for an inquiry, and with me here in the studio, is Andy Evans, who was infected with HIV when he was just five. Andy Evans, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me. I mean, that's quite astonishing to have been infected at the age of five. You've lived with that all your life. Mm. What impact has this horrendous scandal had on you? Um, well, as you say, I was infected at five years old with both HIV and hepatitis C and hepatitis B. Um, and, uh, you know, for somebody who was infected that young and has lived with it for the, their entire life, um, I've never really known anything different. Um, and, of course, uh, you know, I, my parents told me when I was 12 years old, and at that age you're invincible, aren't you? And, uh, you know, I think I made some throwaway comment, like, I'll just have to become a doctor and cure myself then. <laughs> um, but as time progressed um, and uh, I headed towards my late teens, I started to get ill with the HIV virus, and I was actually diagnosed as having full-blown AIDS when I was 16 years old, um, which was at a time that... Uh, there weren't any proper medications around for HIV. It was at the forefront of, of AIDS that we, um, we were actually infected. There's, there's nobody uh, alive older than us than the haemophiliacs who um, have HIV and AIDS. Because you are a haemophiliac, I should have said That's that as correct. well. That's yeah. correct, yes, yes. I was infected through my haemophilia treatment, yeah. But, um, to get AIDS that young, what, kind of, what impact did that, what toll did that take on you? Um, it, at the time, it, it took a, a huge toll, obviously, when you're, you're 16. I mean, the next five years was terrible. I was in and out of hospital all the time. Um, lots of different illnesses caused by the AIDS um, ravaging my body. Um, but, of course, those are also your more, most formative years. So I missed school. I missed university. I missed, missed sort of going out and getting my first job. It was a really difficult time, and it's taken a, a long time in my adult life to kind of get through that and get over it. I mean, I've got to say, I hope you don't mind me saying this, I mean, you look really pretty well now. Thank you, thank you. Is that the case? Um, I'm certainly better than I was before the medications came out. Um, having said that, it's, it's not an easy ride every day. We, we take uh, medications that have extreme side effects, the ones I'm on at the moment have caused uh, osteoporosis, which has caused bone fractures, high blood pressure. Ones I've taken before have caused strokes and avascular necrosis in my hips. It's, it's been uh, very much a roller coaster ride to reach this point, but um, I'm glad to say that I'm, I'm reasonably stable at the moment, yeah. I'm pleased to hear that. Well, let me turn now to Diana Johnson. I mean, Andy has set out so clearly there what the impact of this devastating failure has been. But successive governments were alerted to this problem and failed to act, didn't they? Absolutely, Cathy. And, uh, you know, all governments of both colours, and even when the coalition existed with the Liberal Democrats as well, all of them failed, I think. And so today is a very important day that the Prime Minister has announced we will have a public inquiry into, as you've just heard from that uh, explanation of the effect that this has had on, on Andy and his life. I mean, Andy's not alone. There are 2,400 people who've already died, and there are many thousands who have HIV and hepatitis C and, and various other viruses as well. So there are many people affected by this, and we need to find out what happened and why. Well, let me turn back to, to Andy. I mean, the inquiry presumably gives you some comfort, does it? I think most people today are celebrating cautiously. I think we need to absolutely um, get the terms of reference right for this inquiry. It must have the power to compel witnesses. Um, it must have the power to requisition documentation from the Department of Health. And, and we feel that it needs to have the remit to find liability as well. So a judicial inquiry? We would like a judicial inquiry, but um, what form that takes, we will take advice on, obviously, but, you know, it's going to be... It's going to have to be... This is the last bite at the cherry that we've got, we feel. Um, you know, that we've been waiting for so long. We really need to get this right now. Diana, do you uh, back that as well, a judicial inquiry? Is that the kind of inquiry you'd like to see? 
I think everything that Andy said I would support. What I'm also interested in is whether we could use the Hillsborough style of an independent panel because that seemed to be very successful at making sure in that case that the families were fully involved in the investigation and I think the families and those affected need to be at the heart of whatever is established to deal with this investigation and and so I'm, I'm sympathetic to the need for the forensic skills that a judge would bring but I also think we need to make sure we've got people uh, on the panel or with the judge who have the confidence and support of people who've been affected by this. And obviously a lot of the evidence is not new. What does it so far point to in your view? Well, recently Andy Burnham came forward to the House of Commons with evidence of criminal activity, tampering with medical records, testing people without telling them they were being tested, not telling them what the results were. So he's put together a dossier of, of criminal actions that he is taking to the police. I should and say they're allegations. They're allegations. They they're allegations. But he has a dossier. And of course, at the weekend, we had the six party leaders in Parliament, the opposition party leaders, calling on the Prime Minister in light of new evidence to have this inquiry so I'm just delighted today that we're at the start now of actually trying to find out what happened and answer the questions that people like Andy and my constituent Glenn Wilkinson have about what happened to them. Andy, one of the issues I guess is the level of compensation that British victims have received I mean, mm. I think I'm right in saying uh, somewhere between £20,000 and £63,000 per person. Contrast that with Ireland, where the average has been £275,000. Is that something you'd like to come out of this inquiry, higher compensation? Um, first, can I just say that uh, we've never received any compensation mm. at all. It's all been ex gratia payments. Uh, to uh, have compensation, you have to have an admission of liability, and I there's see. never been that. I see. Um, so everything that we've received so far is, is ex gratia. It's a hardship fund, in, es in essence. Um, and a lot of that has been um, uh, money that we've had to beg for on a case-by-case -case basis. It's not been coming to us uh, forthcoming very easily. So you want decent compensation, proper compensation? I, I won't lie to you and say that money isn't important. I think, you know, for the, for the people, at least the people that are still alive and suffering with this at the moment, um, to have uh, full compensation would certainly make their lives a lot easier. And very briefly, I mean, it's too late for so many victims, isn't it? Absolutely right. I mean, I was uh, one of 250 people that are still alive out of 1,243 who got uh, HIV. Um, and as Diana said, overall 2,400 deaths. Um, yes, it's too late for a lot of people, but at least we can give their families answers to this. An absolute tragedy. Andy Evans and Diana Johnson, thank you very much thank for you. joining me, both of you.